Hi there, my little demons and divas and demonites. Bienvenidos, welcome back to my channel. Que la que hay, mi gente. Estamos activados, estamos encendidos. It is I, Isa, aka the demon diva and the big dog. He's napping. And today, I thought that I sit here and bring you guys a little something different because it was announced on Friday the release of Tegan Knox, Indy Hartwell, and Baron Corbin. And Baron Corbin, I've always been a fan of his. Always been a fan of his. There are some things that I wish I could forget, but there are a lot of things that I enjoyed about his run with WWE. And I have to believe that whatever he goes on to do in the future, he will be successful at because that's just the mindset that he has. So I just thought I'd talk to you guys a little bit about my five favorite moments from Baron Corbin in WWE. There's a lot of them, but I narrow it down to the five that just live in my head rent free and will stay there forever. But before I get into it, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. I've been uploading a lot more content. I go live with watch alongs for Raw, SmackDown, NXT, Dynamite, PLEs. As long as I'm available, I am here live to watch it with you. There's also a join button if you would like to become a demonite. I am uploading more videos for the demonites only. But before I get you my uh, favorite Baron Corbin moment, let's just talk a little bit about his uh, successful runs that he's had. Baron Corbin is a professional wrestler, former professional football player, and a former amateur boxer. Obviously, he's best known for his tenure in WWE as Baron Corbin. He was a one-time United States champion, one-time NXT tag team champion, one-time Money in the Bank briefcase holder, and a one-time king of the ring. He attended Northwest Missouri State University where he played offensive guard and became a starter in his junior year. He was signed with the Indianapolis Colt professionally on April of 2009. He was actually roommates with Pat McAfee at the time. That is a fact that actually started a feud between the two of them, which I ended up thinking that it was great. It looks like he also spent some time with the Arizona Cardinals. He played professional football until about 2011 and began his wrestling journey in 2012 in NXT. I also really enjoy Baron Corbin on WWE's Breaking Ground. That was one of my favorite things that WWE has ever done. I wish they would do it again, especially with the kind of people that they have in the Performance Center now. It would be really interesting to take a look at their uh their regular day-to-day -day lives like they did back then in that show baron corbin was a big part of that show very shocked that he never won the nxt world championship i was actually rooting for him to win it during the second run that he had where he was actually killing it and i'm not sure why they called him back up to the main roster but hey I don't make the decisions around here. He does have a coffee company, which I tried the coffee and it is delicious. I'm going to link it down below so you guys can check it out and support the guy. But what we're here for are my five favorite moments, matches. You get the point. Uh, moments that live rent free in my head featuring Baron Corbin. This might become a series, right? Uh, at number five. Now, there is a lot of things I wish I could forget about this field. But there's one thing that I'll never forget, and that is Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin Fall Counts Anywhere match. This took place at the Royal Rumble 2020 inside Minute Maid Stadium in Houston, and I remember it like it happened yesterday and like it happened right in front of me because it did. Oh my God, that match is crazy. The full match is actually up on the WWE Network right now. They went all over the arena. I was so close to the action insert clips USA 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 American Samoa American Samoa and uh, because it was in a because it was in a baseball stadium like I believe Roman ended up getting the winning pin on top of the dugout the match was insanely brutal physical it was fun they went everywhere if you're gonna do a fall count anywhere match this is the way that it was done one of my favorite matches again might be a little bit biased because i was so close to the action but i thought that baron corbin and roman reigns had really in really good in-ring chemistry corbin actually pinned roman i just didn't like some of the back and forward promo wise especially during that era we all know what i'm talking about at number four is Baron Corbin murder Rey Mysterio. 
Now, he was a Money in the Bank briefcase holder, but that is not the Money in the Bank match I want to talk about, which, don't get me wrong, the one that he won was actually pretty good, too. But this is the pandemic era Money in the Bank, where WWE had to get creative with how they did things, so they took the Money in the Bank uh, briefcase ladder match to the corporate offices, to Titan Towers, rest in peace, and... <laughs> They have both the men and the women going at the same time all throughout the, the, the building. It was such a fun match. This is like when actually WWE really thought outside of the box and it worked. But what I'm here to talk to you about is the fact that <laughs> Baron Corbin fucking threw Rey Mysterio off the side of the building. <laughs> and I've never been able to forget about that moment. Who's that jumping out the sky? Even though we all know that they had a, pad, a landing pad. Like, yeah, all of the like, people killed Kayfabe and the truth came out later. But I don't care. I don't care. All I remember is Baron Corbin tossing Rey Mysterio. Oh, my God. It was too fucking good. All right. Number three. This is a parry that should have never worked. But it worked. And I'm mad that they broke him up. I actually still wish they were together. I'm talking about... The wolf dogs. The wolf dogs dogs baron corbin brought out a side of brawn breaker that i never thought i'd seen i never thought i liked that's actually when i turned around on brawn breaker because during his original run as nxt champ i actually thought he was boring i didn't think he had it right like i wasn't interested in what he was doing but my god the baron corbin just bring out everything good about brawn breaker and they made so much sense together they went on to win the nxt tag team titles but i really enjoyed everything that they did particularly their segments backstage <laughs> when they named the team the wolf dogs <laughs> what did you just say and when they came out in the motorcycles together i'm sorry baron corbin and brawn breaker was such a great pairing and i wish we would have seen them together in the main roster i really think they would have worked i it's not like they care about tactics but all right at number two this is not a moment this is the whole fucking gimmick bomb ass corbin <laughs> I gotta give a special shout out to the Brothers of Production. There's a YouTube channel called the Brothers of Production and they have a video. They came out with it a while back before, you know, before this happened. And they give you the full breakdown of the story of Bomb Ass Corbin. I'm gonna link that below because I actually really enjoyed that video. But Baron Corbin, it all started when he lost his crown to Shinsuke Nakamura because don't forget he was king of the ring. And from there everything went downhill and he even started a gofundme but it ended up that the person that started the gofundme for him scammed him and took his uh identity john cena he asked john cena for help he found a credit card scanner and tried to get everybody in the arena to give him a thousand dollars and the commitment to this gimmick from baron corbin was just beautiful stuff right he had the beer he was the shovel and i gotta tell you something i was at summer Sam in las vegas in 2021 and I saw, with my own eyes, Baron Corbin running around the casino at the hotel dressed like bum-ass Corbin, which is probably when they recorded the... Because if you guys remember, it was in Vegas where he hit a big and he made a back to normal. And of course, we lost bum-ass Corbin. But... But I saw him. Like, what? And there was a fan that tried to give him money. Like... Baron Corbin was so committed. That's the thing that I really enjoyed about Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin tried to make everything that they gave him work. Even the constable bullshit. He tried his best. He never... I feel like that's one of the reasons why he was so popular and people love working with him. is because he just never not made it work. You know? But everything that Bum Ass Corbin did, it's, it's, it's a character that I will forever remember fondly. It brought me laughs. It was creative. It was out of what they what they normally do and the fact that they stuck with it and let him do his thing. It was in an era where they really did, weren't taking those chances. I can see Bum Ass Corbin happening today, not when it happened. So that's what like, even makes it more crazy if you really think about it. And the number one moment that i will never ever 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 forget is the end of days to becky lynch i'm a big fan of the end of days i think the end of days is one of the most incredible finishers there is like it, it ranks on my top three the end of days is my favorite finisher and i'm very pissed off that drew mcintyre kicked out of it you and me both 
bullshit. I just, it is. It's bullshit. <laughs> like, I'm not even kidding. I love the end of days. In a field that nobody cared about because they paired him with Lacey Evans for some reason. This is why I can't believe that they let go of this man after the shit that they put him through. Even when they made him the constable, they made him, like, take the blame for the show sucking. Remember that? When we became the authority? Like, like, Corbin put up with a lot. But back to the topic they pair him up with Lacey Evans for whatever reason they were having a tag team match and Baron Corbin remember Seth and Becky married in real life this asshole Baron Corbin picks up Becky Lynn shout out to the man for taking the end of days and selling it like a million bucks gives her the end of days and they looked at Seth Rollins and said what are you gonna do about it bitch was gangster man i'm enjoying talking about baron corbin too much um that was gangster so you guys go those are five of my favorite moments or matches of baron corbin in wwe i really am a huge fan of corbin i am really sad to see him go but i am glad that we have some of these things to remember and look back fondly and there's a part of me that wishes we see him back I said what I said. There is a part of me that would love to see Baron Corbin back in WWE. I'm going to miss you, man. I'm going to miss you, Baron Corbin. Not that he's watching this. I'm talking to him like I'm saying goodbye to him already. Not that he's watching this, but I really am going to miss Baron Corbin. And I feel like he made everything that they give him work and underutilized there towards the end. But I follow him on social media. I cannot wait to see what he cooks up next. And... That's it. Let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite Baron Corbin moment. Are you a fan? Do you love the end of days? I know a lot of people talk about the dip six. Great finisher too, but he never finished anybody with that. The end of days is where it's at. All right? All right. Until next time. Adios. Mwah. Boop.